Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Fan Behavior. I'm Zoe. I'm here with Hannah. Hi. This is the final week, final episode before a triple header, which is funny because we've been together for the last handful of weeks, Mm -hmm. but then right as there's going to be races, we we will be together next weekend for Austin, but then after that, we will not be together for Mexico or Brazil. You'll be gone one weekend. I'll be gone the next. That's just how it goes. How the cookie crumbles. How the cookie crumbles. But we've got some fun peeps lined up. We do. And I'm excited. Mm, I'm going to take that back. (laughs) I am, I have mixed feelings about the usgp coming up okay in terms of my emotional state and how i'm going to feel but i am looking forward to it being back to some degree and i'm i'm looking forward to us watching a race together because we have not watched and watching coda together yes yes exactly it's the first time we've watched we'll watch it on tv and and it's our first is it the first race together like that we will have watched all season yeah that that's what i'm saying we have not watched one race together this year which is we're not even friends no i mean i guess we did watch miami together well okay (laughs) in person doesn't doesn't count count. um we didn't really see it i know i mean it's just very challenging during the european swing yeah to you know i don't do well i know it's like you want to just wake up roll out of bed turn on the tv and watch so now that we're heading into the more the Americas. Yeah, the Americas, which we won't be together again for most of it, but right. that's okay. Um, I also would like to say um, at the top of the episode, two things about clothes. One, this Fred Vassour short, shorts. <laughs> it's kind of hard should to say. Shorts. It's kind of hard to say fast. This shirt with Fred Vassour on it yeah. is iconic. Shout out to the Red Flags and Jenny. Thank you so much for sending. It is and iconic. It is, I was telling Zoe before we started, it's like one of the nicest t-shirts I've ever put up. I mean, it's like thick and... I did. I think I got an XL because I like baggy shirts, and I no sh- no shade. Kind of anticipated like a Gildan or something because oh, okay. that's what a lot like you know. Yeah, that's what we're used to seeing in the world. High um, quality, and because it's high quality, it's also like probably more a- true to size. Appropriate size. So if you like going a size like uh, oversized, I'd maybe just go like one size up. But live your truth. Yeah, I was gonna. I was telling her too that my Yuki sweatshirt, the one that Nicole. Piastri also has yeah, is great twins. quality as well. Yeah. Um. So God, she's cool. Go shop at the Red Flags merch store. They've For got real. good stuff. I I also want to say at the top that um our thoughts are with anyone who's been affected by these terrible hurricanes oh, in yeah. Florida. It's so bad. Um. And North Carolina. S- yep. Yep. Like all basically just all over the East Coast for the last couple of weeks. It's been bad. And I know we have some listeners who are in those areas. So we're thinking of you. Hope you're safe. Hope. You're handling it okay. Mm-hmm. Hope we can be a little bit of a reprieve yeah. <laughs> if we can. Um, and but we have to talk about also since you were you were gone for a bit this past week and you were in Vegas. Yes. And you shared a very fun photo of yourself with um, someone special. So would you like to yeah. share? Sure. So I was at a convention for convenience stores. This is for her real job. For my actual job. Yes. And I didn't really, I mean, and I guess it makes sense because when you think about, I mean, con- what's, what's in a grocery store, a convenience store when you w- go in? It's drinks. It's um, like there was a poppy booth. Oh, I got you a bag. I forgot to bring it. This really cute poppy um, like tote bag. It's actually oh that God. color green. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. Well, I'll thanks. have to bring it to you next week. Okay. Um, but you know, I love Poppy. Yeah, of course. And then um, candy and just a bunch of stuff. But that also comes with like energy drinks. Yes. And I forgot the volume of celebrities that are involved in the alcohol and energy drink industry. So the first person that I come across is Kevin Hart. So small. Yeah. And <laughs> we're waiting for like 40 minutes, which is incredibly too long. I feel pretty humiliated that I'm like standing there with my coworker. I'm like, we're overdoing it probably what do you mean to meet him well no no not to meet him but just to like see he was gonna give um i don't know if he was giving a talk or something he was just like a celebrity appearance for c4 i think and i don't know if it's an energy drink that he like backs or whatever so we're standing there and then this mc guy comes on and he's like okay so in a minute i'm gonna need everyone to part the red sea you'll know when it's time well okay everyone like was trying to gather around the stage and we're far away. So we started parting the Red Sea immediately because I was like, oh, then he'll walk past us. It was so icky. There's like, and it was cool. Like this drum line comes out and it was fine. But then it's just like this line of people with their phones out 
I like zoo animal Mm -hmm. and it I felt like really weird being a part of it but also like I stood there for 40 minutes so I couldn't you were participating Yeah. yeah so then we leave to go to another side. I didn't even know there was another side of this trade show. It was like so bonkers. And we see Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. And he, same sort of vibe, except for he wasn't being announced. He was trying to leave whatever he was doing. Mm-hmm. And he's waiting with his security to get on an elevator. And the amount of adult men who were crowding this man, first of all, he'll kick your ass. Second of all, he's just a dude. Now, I get it. I've had my own moments with celebrity. I get it. But when you're out, like far enough away watching it, it's just kind of like it is mind blowing. Yes. Okay. Then we saw Conor McGregor at some point too. But what happened right after we saw Mike Tyson is I walk in, and there's a I think it was a I think it might be like a large tobacco company. Okay. Velo. I don't know. Oh. But I think they're they're I know they're a sponsor of um, Aero McLaren. Okay. Which is why. So I don't see Christian at first, Christian Lungard. Yeah. Did you say that, that that's who I saw? No. Okay. <laughs> Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> um, Indie car driver. I just saw an open wheel McLaren and I sort of like I, it wasn't processing quick enough. Yeah. And then I saw who looked like Felix. Rosenquist. Rosenquist, yeah. Who is not a driver with McLaren anymore. I know enough about IndyCar to know that. And I was like, that's odd. What's he doing in papaya? Wasn't him. <laughs> and then I saw sweet little Christian with his little glasses. <laughs> and then, because I was also confused because the two people he was with were also in like the papaya shirt. Yeah. And I was like, so maybe they're his t- team or, you know, handlers. I don't know what they were doing there, but I was like, not drivers. But I, it was funny because earlier I had the uh, electrolyte. No. Extra- Extra- electrolyte? Electrolyte, yeah. yes. Um, First of all, they showed no mention of Pato in their booth anywhere, which I thought was absurd. But then I was I told Olivia, the girl I work with, that I was just like, it would be so fun if Pato Award was there. And then I had this like, you know how we daydream about of random course, stuff. Of course. So I had this like wild fantasy in my mind <laughs> that I would see Pato yeah. and he would recognize me because you've met. Yeah. And well, he knows Michaela. Like I had something to talk to him yeah. about. And yeah. I felt like when we were in the McLaren hospitality two years ago now, like that he was kind oh, of like oh, trying oh. to in place F- who F1 we were in the F1 hospitality. Got it. Yeah. And he was just kind of like, th- I think I they're familiar, but I don't know why. Sure. Now that could also just be my own ego. I have absolutely no Well, idea. when I met him, he did not say to me, you look familiar. Where have I seen you before? <laughs> well, so he was trying to be too cool because he was intimidated. Anywho, that didn't happen. But you can imagine my surprise when then I see another Errol McLaren Yes, yeah, so how did the interaction go? It was fine. I was kind of, there was like a lot of people around and I, I think what's hard is not to diminish his person. Yeah. I imagine I was one of very few people who knew who he was there just because IndyCar, like it has a big audience, but it's not like massive. It's specific. It's very specific. It's like, specific, Yeah, yes. I mean, I just feel like. It's one of those things, If and I, I say this about F1 too, if you're aware of Formula One, then these people are, in, in that space, they're so famous. Yeah. But if you're in an area where people are not aware, they're not, very few have transcended mm-hmm. like a Lewis Hamilton has. Right. But IndyCar, it's, if you're in that space, they're famous. But if you're not, then they can kind of just exist. Totally. Yeah. And I think because there was also two other people in the same outfit, it like right. sort of, it throws everyone off. Right. So, but there was a lot of dudes talking to him about the car. Uh-huh. Which is just like, I get it. Do you? No. It's so, (laughs) it's like, whatever. So I like kept, I kind of got nervous because I didn't want to be, I I know I can come off a little, you know, excited. No, but just like, he's a chill Danish boy. Danish? He's Danish, I'm pretty sure he's Danish, And I have actually a little card that he signed that they were, there was just a stack of them. I just picked it up. up here. Oh yeah, I should have brought it. Um, Next time. And Mm. put it by the Indy 500 to manifest for him so you can get a win. Yes. Um, (laughs) I also... I think I knew somewhere <laughs> along the way that he had moved to McLaren, but like, I wasn't really sure of what was going on. Yeah. So then I, and I also had the moment of like, I'm, I know that that's who that is, but if I don't look it up to yes. confirm, I'm going to look like a douche. So we walked around. That's when we saw Conor McGregor. Now he was eating up the fact that everyone was being of very course. obsessed. And I made a very strong decision to not stand in line to get a photo with him. A hundred percent. I kind of wish I would have I, just for the bit. Just, yeah. um, also he's hot in person. I get it. I did not see it. Okay. And then you see him in real life and he's got an aura. 
Anyway. Well, I believe he has an aura, but I don't. That's whatever fine. it's anyway back to christian <laughs> so i finally get the nerve to go up we're just kind of standing there because he's talking to this other dude about the car and i'm just kind of like okay can you move I, I have to talk to this man because i'm in his field you know <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway i go up to him and i was just i like I, I don't know what came over me but i was just like hi how are you i'm hannah i like shook his hand and i was like um i you know i have a, po- a motorsport <laughs> podcast i was much actually surprisingly I believe very it. chill I believe it I, believe but I was it. like I have a motorsports podcast with um one of my best friends but we mostly cover f1 but we're tr- you know really like we've trying to get into IndyCar huge fans of yours I wasn't even following him which I felt really bad about uh, in hindsight for some he doesn't give a damn um but I, I was just like then I didn't know if he knew Hannah and um Emma from track talk because oh. I just didn't know. They just feel very like like they know a lot of drivers now. And I didn't know if they anyway. So I said, I asked him and (laughs) he was like, it sounds familiar. I think like, you know, and yeah. maybe, and this is obviously no shade to them. No. Because I was just like, I, I was just I, I was going to say, a, there, are, there are a handful of, of, of IndyCar drivers who I like know for certain that Emma and mm-hmm. Hannah are like friends with, close to. Totally. I don't know if Christian's in that Right. I didn't either. Group. So that's yeah. why I asked. Yeah. Um, and I, it, no, they're not in the, like a friendship group. Okay. <laughs> not like even Malukas, <laughs> for correct, example. Correct. Yeah. Which yeah. is also, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, so I was just like. You know, great to meet you. Excited, you know, for next season. Do you mind if we take a photo? And then after we took the photo, which is quite possibly the worst no, photo it, I've it ever No, it was taken. a good photo, Hannah. It was not a bad photo. Okay, well, then I'm, uh, my, you know, I didn't even judge my hair. We're our own worst critic. I understand. It was not good. Um, and that's okay. But it was fun. He was really sweet. And I was like, so how long are you um, here for? He's like, I'm leaving right now. And I, <laughs> I was like, oh, so soon. I'm sorry I ruined your day. <laughs> And he was just like, no, you actually had perfect timing because I'm That's about nice. to leave. And I was like, That's okay, nice. bye, little boy. Well, and then actually he was so sweet. He asked because Olivia took the picture of us and he was like, do you want one too? And she was like, oh, he did the thing. And I was like, she has no idea what's going on right now. It has nothing to do with you she's doing this for me and he yeah. was like totally get it oh no, that's nice <laughs> so yeah he was good very yeah oh, i'm glad you had a good interaction yeah, it was fun. and then like there was um at there was another trade show that i was there for and one of the uh i can't remember which one it was but it, they're, they're a sponsor of mercedes so like lewis hamilton's pictures everywhere then i go to this convention store thing and i you know you've got the mclaren you have red bull there's monster lando or oscar's suit is kicking uh-huh. it um there was a sim uh sim machine but i wasn't about to humil- humiliate myself in the right. monster booth around <laughs> well you know the type so <laughs> <laughs> the monster uh monster elite well and the um what are they called the ring girls or something oh and like so much respect so much but respect. they attract a very frustrating oh, hundred percent and so i just couldn't bring no. myself to go in there no. and then red bull I mean, they don't need the F1 of it all, but they didn't have a lick of anything about anyone. Hmm. So, missed off. Missed opportunity for them. Yeah. Anyway, well, sorry for the long story. I, no, I also just wanted to tell you about all the other people that that's I That's fun. That's so fun. Bad. People, someone did write or comment that they they like the Formula One stuff, but they appreciate the other tangents too. Oh, good. And someone did respond, write, write a comment on YouTube um, saying that they want to hear the Nutella story. <laughs> <laughs> another time well it'll, it'll yeah, be another it'll, time. it'll be like a bit that we just keep well we should maybe maybe we should just do an ama storytelling of just random thing that's true yeah. that has that can be se- separate of the formula one of it all yeah. that's a good point um okay well speaking of formula one something i i teased on um social media was this dream that i had of lando yeah. now i do feel i was telling hannah off mic that i do feel like i've overhyped i don't actually think i've overhyped it but i think that people think it's going to be some They'll wild be like, and crazy oh. dream and that's it's I can tell you right now, not it's very it PG. It's not crazy. Well, because if it wasn't PG, but, you wouldn't be talking about it. But the reason that I brought it up was because, so I'm someone, I don't know how you are with dreams. And I also, I said this in the Instagram story. I know that there's a lot of people who just hate when people talk about their dreams. Oh, I don't. I love it. Well, that's good. I'm glad. Um, but. Well, we dream about a lot of celebrities. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Anyway. But, um. What was I going to say? Oh, I, I'm the kind of person that when I dream, typically it's, I'll remember a fragment of a dream or something, but I, it's very, it's not often that it's very vivid. Same. 
but when I wake up from a dream and it's incredibly vivid, it's like, whoa, that, that it, I don't know. It's just a unique experience yeah, and you have to write it for down. me. And I had one, this is a side note. And again, this can be for our AMA a different day, but I had one a few weeks ago about Joe Burrow. Interesting. That was like, and I, and I, so, well, that one was kind of like a life changing dream. And I, I don't know if you, I, like I to hear think about I it. told you this like years ago, but I had, uh, I'd had this dream this was years ago <laughs> about Ryan Tedder, the lead singer of One Republic. And wow. he, and in the dream he was, I don't, I now do not remember the dream, but it was an, an incredibly vivid dream. And I remember he was kind of mean to me in the dream. <laughs> and then a couple of days later, I think I saw him on like a TV show and it, I like you felt were, anger towards him yeah. from something that happened in a literal dream. Yeah. I mean, better than like being in love with someone who's never met you. I've had that. Well, so that was kind of a bit of the Joe Burrow situation sure. and someone who I never, I mean, he's fine. I've never, I've never been a Joe Burrow girly, mm -hmm. you know, but anyway, that's a, again, that's a, just a different story. Yeah. Go I, just, just while we're on Joe Burrow, which not really, but I just want to make it known here that I'm really into Travis Kelsey's Sean Hunter era. You know who I, we, we have to thank for that? Taylor. Taylor Swift. Because she's in her sh share clueless era. Yeah. So I just yeah. love what they're doing. She apparently, uh, the long hair is, is thanks to Taylor Swift. She encouraged him Hot. to grow out his hair. So anyway, I'm sorry. Um, Lando. Lando. So I wake up from a dream Friday morning and it was incredibly vivid. And I think if you're someone who dreams, you know what I'm talking about. You just remember every Everything. detail and that's not common for me. Okay. So this is the dream. And I literally woke up, got on my phone wrote it down because I knew that I'd forget. And yeah. it was just funny. I had to share. Okay. So we're in Orlando. Okay. Now I think part of that is because obviously like there's a lot of news about Florida. My cousin lives in Orlando. So I think I was probably, you know, thinking of her, hoping that she's okay, mm -hmm. whatever. We're in Orlando and Lando is driving me to the airport. Okay. okay? Sure. Now I, I think we were together but it was never made a ton it was never made clear okay but he was incredibly emotional about me leaving Aww. like but in a almost like too much way oh, like sir you're too emotional um just kind of like i don't want you to leave i don't want you to leave why do you have to leave it's just like a little bit too much okay and um i would have eaten that shit up i wrote down i couldn't figure out if we were together or just friends or or even family but he was like crying oh yeah it was like Okay. Then, so we're like driving to this, driving to the airport. Now, I don't know if this is just me in my dreams, but in, in my dreams, oftentimes I'll be places that are relatively normal or simple, but in my dream, they're extremely complicated. Mm -hmm. So like at this airport, there was like a thousand different terminals, entrances, ways you could get in and out. Yeah. And we were just driving around forever and we could not figure out where I needed to be dropped off. He's, he's again, please don't leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Like why are you leaving? But yeah, good thing you can't find the entrance. I don't know what this entrance. means. If someone like analyzes dreams, tell me why what yeah. what this means. Um, so then we finally figure out where which which terminal I or like where I need to be dropped off. Um, he he gets out of the car and okay, this is also how you know it's a dream because he was taller than me in this Fine. dream, and I was like, I woke up and I remember being like, mm, yeah, that's okay. Not real. <laughs> um, and oh yeah, and then at one point, like right before he leaves. He puts his hands, he puts both of his hands on my face and he just goes, he would. I can't remember. I, I didn't have this written down, but I think he said something like, you know, I like, I, I cannot wait till the next time we see each other or something like wow. that. It was very intense. He yeah. was very intense. And I don't feel like I was reciprocating properly. Probably not. <laughs> um, so anyway, we part ways, but this is the part that really made me laugh. I'm like walking, I'm like walking away from him and this girl comes up to me and she's like, were you just with Lando Norris? And I said, yes. And then Sue Sylvester Glee style slushies me in the face. I swear to you, slushies me in the face. I wake up. Well, of course, you're so startled by the slushy. End of dream. Hilarious. That's I was so <laughs> funny. I know. That's so random. I know. Again, I'm like, where did was that she in come a track from? Suit? <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't. Su oh, you mean the girl? I, I, yeah, the girl? Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, I it was cracking me up. And then, cause you know, they, they do say like, if you, if you consume content or something, if you, if you're watching a show or you're like looking at your phone of something before you go to bed, you might yeah. dream about that. And so part of me wondered, okay, was I, 
did I had I watched a Lando? I couldn't remember if I'd watched a Lando TikTok or something yeah. before I went to bed. And then I was also like, did I watch a Glee something Glee yeah. themed before bed? Because why was the slushy in the face yeah. in my dream? Who knows? That's the dream. That's incredible. So well, I'm sorry about that. I took a slushy in the face okay. for you, Lando. I yeah. know it was so. And he is not to me. He is not an emotional person or tall. Or tall, but but especially I don't yeah. I do not see him at all being overly no. sentimental or mushy gushy. He's not that type of person. No. So it was just a very interesting experience. Yeah. Anyway, that's the dream. Um, okay, some other just pieces of news. This is going to be a long episode, I'm assuming, because we've got Coda questions. We've got Would You Rather questions. Um, Lewis Hamilton will be co-chairing the 2025 Met Gala this Incredible. year so um the theme and uh well actually i was gonna say who else he's co-chairing with um so it's actor coleman domingo who mm-hmm. people probably know from i would say our generation would know him from euphoria yeah um lewis he hamilton also, if you're he was just on armchair expert and it was oh. a fantastic episode. yeah he's like a very interesting person yeah, like i feel really like he's cool. like a cool person yeah um Lewis, obviously, ASAP Rocky, Pharrell. Also cool. And LeBron James. And the theme is super fine tailoring black style, which will celebrate black dandyism. I don't know. I'm not even sure what that word means. From the 18th century through its revival during the Harlem Renaissance and its impact on luxury fashion today. Lewis Hamilton's the perfect person. Of course. Perfect. Anna knows that. Anna knows They've that. They've been friends for a long time. And... You know, we we love F1 drivers at the Met Gala. There's only been two. But we love F1 drivers at the Met. And maybe this will, maybe some other people will get well, an yeah, invite. Well, yeah, so this is what I was going to say before we, because we kind of go through. Well, she tells me what we're going to be talking about. <laughs> and I was like, I'll save this for the pod. But, you know, when I think about a, a gala. Yeah, a gala. No, a gala. <laughs> ten table, or yeah, ten chairs per table, right? So feasibly, you could have each driver there without a plus one. Mm. at two tables that's no biggie now there's also people that i don't know are going to be they're not going to make the cut no (laughs) but i'm certainly curious to see i think we need to get daniel back there he look he did it on his own once before did it on his own and and he did it he might go with ann (laughs) <laughs> wait oh Anne Hathaway I thought you meant Anna Wintour I was oh, like wait, no, why no, do you no. have Anna Wintour her name's Anna we'll go with Anne yeah yeah he, no that won't happen but it could <laughs> be fun sure. um well he was he he went to the Met Gala when he wasn't driving in, a, in F1 so yeah. yes it's totally possible um I was thinking like so obviously Charles Leclerc yeah would be uh, just an obvious there'll be teammates that you know yeah, that'd Dapper be fun as hell. I mean I don't think Joe will be an F1 driver next year, but he's but an Joe obvious. But Joe would be so perfect at the Met. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. He's the perfect Met Gala person. I mean, I'm going to ride for my guy, Yuki, Yuki. <laughs> of course. Well, because he'll look swag as hell. Yes. The interviews will be hilarious. Yes. I don't know if Anna respects right. Yuki. I mean, George is definitely weaseling his way in there. Sure. Um, Pierre. Yeah. He's definitely he and he would want it. He's fighting oh, for that invitation. Absolutely, he is banging down doors yeah. to get that. Met and I don't Gala know invite. how it all works. Like just because you're hosting or co-chairing, like do you get? It's all Anna's and it's all Anna, and it's all based off of. So like I think with Daniel when he went, I think it was you go with the designer. So like he, he got the Hugo? invite with Tom. I mean Tom, Tom Brown. Yes, and then and then Anna has to approve the designers guests like so then Anna has to go around and be like okay yes for Daniel yes for I think Olivia Rodrigo went with them like you know and then that's how it that's so how if it Lewis wants to bring his own people he has to go through his designer basically or, or yeah or right or designer. Charlotte Claire has to find I think does he is, does he have a partnership with a luxury brand but like Pierre I know has done some stuff with Louis Vuitton yeah so like okay you could get in, get there. in there Yuki I mean m- maybe Hugo yeah like because of the partnership I mean there's all of these F1 teams have mm-hmm. these designer kind of connections. Yeah. Who else? I'm trying to think if there's anyone else I'm forgetting. Well, what I would really love to see happen. I have a feeling, could be wrong. I think Harry Styles is coming back soon. Okay, yeah. I just feel uh, like that, he's, that's, he's surfacing. That's the, yeah. Mm-hmm. And what I would love to have happen mm-hmm. is for this to be the time that we actually get content of him speaking to Formula One drivers. Yes. Or driver. Don't yes. care. I want Daniel to be there. Yes. 
here in my heart, he's still a Formula One driver, and Lewis, and like I just need them chatting on the carpet. Yeah, for sure. And I also in wouldn't really be surprised cool if um, Taylor and Travis go next year too. Let's get it going, guys. Okay, if he shows up in something stupid, I'm gonna be. He so definitely upset. will. He totally will. No, I mean not it's stupid, it. but it's gonna be. It's not gonna be just a plain black tux, you know. No, but I will say, like this theme is a lot more important. Yes. Than some others, yes. and you have to be very careful. Yes, you do have to be and careful. So I think I that agree. helps. The people like he, he's not gonna take any like bold risks. Yes. <laughs> he's gonna just wear. Yeah. Something. Everyone's got to be on their p's and q's. A hundred percent. Yeah. If you're a white person, yeah, you know, that's what. Obviously check yourself. That's the undertone of this conversation. Check yourself. Yeah. yeah. Why people stay chill, you know, <laughs> like, don't be stupid. Don't, Someone just don't w- be stupid. So I did see, like, s- people were saying the craziest stuff. Cause you know how Kim Kardashian, she got Who's Marilyn, <laughs> yeah, she got Marilyn Monroe's like outfit from whatever the, you know, costume exhibit, like yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then they had, they like tailored it to fit her. And people were like, why would you do this? People were saying some crazy stuff about who like Kim Kardashian would take outfits from and it was like it was i mean i'm not gonna it was just kind of funny but yeah everyone needs to be careful yeah just just don't be dumb don't be dumb yeah respect always respect anyway i'm very happy for lewis this is very exciting and we just love we this is the quintessential this is a perfect example of when you know formula one meets pop culture and it's what we live for. And Lewis has been killing that game 100%. for a very long time. And we appreciate he, his He business. also just, you know, he has a capsule collection with Dior. Dior. And I was laughing because I was like, yep, our capsule collection with Sunday Avenue, which Ooh. we love. Oh, of course. Of course. But I was just also just Lewis like. And Hamilton capsule with Dior. It's just a bummer that the F1 fan demographic that can afford his capsule collection is quite small. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't think it's for, I think it's of for the Of course it's not. But like. I'll tell you one thing right now. If Daniel Ricardo had a capsule collection with Dior, which respectfully will never happen, uh-huh. I, I I think we would at least co-purchase an item <laughs> that we a could share. Chain or something. Yeah. <laughs> like a wallet. So, yeah. Um, by the way, his new Enchante garage drop. I'm absolutely buying something Me from too. it. I'm so excited. Me too. I got the like preview clip of this sick corduroy button up thing and I'm like and it says Badger on I it. Know. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I can't wait to see the whole thing. I know, and the pop up in Austin. Yeah, well, I don't I rip. Also, Red Bull apparently came out like like statement. Daniel Ricardo will not be in Austin this year. Stop talking about him. I know. I know they're being asked, I understand. But it's it is it's not their like, fault. Well, it's not it's not the social admin's fault. Right. <laughs> but that pop up. So yeah, if anyone's going to Austin or going to be in, in Austin and you want to buy Enchante stuff, uh, I think Which the pop should. up we is on Friday and Saturday. Uh, so it's obviously hard if you're going to the track or, but if you're not going to every day. Um, and that's the one reason why in Formula One, it's silly to make plans early because yeah, that's you never probably know. always been on the calendar. Yeah. Tough. 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 You know who was I, when I was w- crossing a, like, looping around and saw the Red Bull booth. I was just desperate to see Scotty James there, but I did not realize that she had had her baby already. Yes, congratulations, congratulations. to Scotty and Chloe. Leo Harry is his name, which is cute. Um, that pregnancy went incredibly fast for me. I don't know. Oh, why. I think she announced it quite late. Probably. Um, and c- congrats to Lance, who's now officially an uncle. <laughs> Yay. Um, <laughs> uh, also, speaking of Daniel, he tried he did you know emotional warfare on all of us dropping his singapore bts which was so an emoji he no you he did this colon parentheses smiley face singapore bts sad as hell Mm. (laughs) um you could totally tell it was the it was a photo dump it was it was the photos of someone who's just taken it all in yeah you know the name on the on the garage floor the suit the helmet like very much absorbing yeah. but it was the I picture didn't know they swapped home helmet yeah it was a picture of him with oscar that was really like the dagger in the heart which was so cute it was i think he was like passing the australian tour yeah i mean his his message is something like you know keep flying the flag uh here's to many more wins i hate this and i because i was thinking to myself i was like wait had they never but they so like when daniel you know left like when he temporarily left when Formula on sabbatical. one oscar wasn't in like it was because of oscar oh, you know right. so they never had the chance in that year and then obviously last year they were both is all fine and good coming back so this is like until oscar kind of, slammed him into the wall right yeah 
sort of. Kidding, um, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, so it's like like their first time to exchange. And I think people were hoping he'd exchange with m- maybe Max or, but he has already exchanged with Max before. Because I did see some like after this post, people put up um, a Twitter thread of like all of the times he like all the helmets exchanges he's had at the end of the year. Yeah. With different people. Um, and I just love that it was with Oscar. Yeah, I bet Nicole just feels really relieved that they're okay. You know. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. bad blood. Yeah. Um, I would love to see. I mean. I guess I guess Oscar has Mark Weber. Maybe Daniel can become Jack's Mark Weber. You know? Yeah. Like kind of be his I don't think he's a, would be a manager. That's not really something I feel like is his strength. No, I don't think but so. But more of a mentor. Yeah. Um anyway, I it was a tough it's kind of one of those things where it's like you have a, a bruise or something on your body and like you don't think about it it, it doesn't hurt. Oh, but yes, then if I someone pu- well. like pushes it it, like you're like ow that hurts yeah him dropping this dump it was, was kind of like someone yeah. pushing on the bruise yeah um absolutely i feel fine most of the days but then like these little things yeah i do have to say i was like really proud of him though i felt like he it was a like i know that sounds really dumb and silly but we all already he's cried working about through it. it he's working yeah through i mean it. i think it like probably took him a lot to like go through the pictures pick what he was doing come up with a caption <laughs> he really spent some time with that caption <laughs> he probably did that's the thing about the short ones it's like not the humans the short captions those are the ones that usually take the longest to figure out um to formulate i yeah i do think he is going to be so the jets play the bills in new york monday night mm. so tonight when when this comes out i have a strong feeling he's going to be at this at that game um just putting that out there in case it's true and in case Travis feels like taking in a Bills game with a Formula One driver. Yeah. He won't, but he won't. Could be fun. <laughs> it could be fun. Um, and then the final piece of news before we get to everything else is that Haas and Toyota um, have a technical partnership effective immediately. It's funny when you say technical, like it's a like technically their yeah. partner. Yeah, no, it's a technical partnership. Yes. And uh, we've been, you know, asking for Toyota back in Formula One and Haas is at least once. <laughs> at least once. And Haas is Haas is doing the thing. So hopefully this just means I mean, I'm not the biggest Haas fan. You know this. Yeah. Um but it's cool. And, and it's cool to have different manufacturers and people in Formula One. Obviously Ford is coming with Red Bull, Toyota with Haas. Um I just think it's I, I I like to spice it up. Audi, you know, yeah, it's fun. And, you know, I, like for Haas, I think bringing, for the drivers that are there, like bringing in more money for them, you know, it's all good yep. things. Yep, it's all good things. Um, okay, should we get to some of the USGP questions? Please. You guys asked some good ones. And so we will they always do. try to get through as many of these as we can. Now, one thing I will say before we get into it is, and I know this is going to sound so dumb and I don't, I like not talking down, but it's going to sound obvious, which makes it seem like just say it. But so many of these questions or just so much of what you might be thinking about over the coming days as you lead up to going to Austin or any race, Google is your friend. Like, Oh, I sure. cannot. I mean, there were so many things that I was like thinking of wondering and truly a Google search, you will get well, Google, Reddit, TikTok. Reddit, Reddit's huge too. Cause Reddit, you're going to get actual people giving you their actual thoughts. Yeah. Um, so just utilize the internet as much as you can. I know it's, I feel like I'm the, I, I have some friends who, um, I feel like I'm used as like a human Google sometimes. Yeah. I feel like you probably f- feel this way too. Where yeah. I, I, and some, I sometimes use you as Google. It's okay. I'm guilty of it. And I have some friends who will ask me questions, like text me questions and i'm just like you could just look it up look it up the worst for me is when it happens at work oh yeah i've it's sent tough. this to you already yeah look it up but anyway so that i and i, I again I'm, I'm not saying that as like no you I guys understand. are all dumb you guys need, <laughs> need yeah. to google I mean, stuff. we requested these questions yes. so and, and there's a lot of things that google will not tell you yeah. um, or it's harder to find or it's more complicated to find or you don't know really where to find it right but i will say um that's a good just start and the there. and the um track website is always really good too yeah okay go ahead how can i go to the driver fan zone thing is there a schedule posted somewhere yes so highly recommend if you have the time it's really fun um i would say usually we've gotten there what half an hour early but like before it starts yes. and there's always space to stand on the front now two things one i would recommend getting there 
about that time because it's shady there. Well, what, can what I just can I just say something before? So, in terms of the schedule posted, oh yes, I was getting there. Oh, sorry. Okay, no, it's fine. I was just going to say, download, this is like a comprehensive thing, not just for this question, yeah. download the Coda app. Mm-hmm. Before you go, download the app because you will have a map of where everything is. And I think it's off, you can use it when you, do, even if you don't have data, it yes. loads. And, and it will, they will have the schedules posted for when these, when everything's going on, when everything's happening. Continue. Yes. Um, but yeah, so that's where you can get the schedule. Now, you, I don't think know who's going, like on day one, you won't know who the drivers are going to be. Is that true? Or did I make that up? It might tell, I can't, I, they might tell you, um, like it's going to be Haas, Williams, Ferrari, Mercedes. Okay. It, it, they, they might tell you the days, but they split. So they split the days up Friday morning. Well, actually, yeah. Will it be different this year because of the sprint? No, because we, we were it was a sprint last year. I know, but the sprint race last year was in the afternoon and now it's in the morning. And I just oh. don't know, I don't know if that's going to affect I don't know if it's going to change it. But well, anyway, uh, the only thing I would think it would change is it would put the driver rally thing in the afternoon. Oh, maybe but I have so. No idea. But I guess typically in the past they they'll, they'll do half of the teams on the Friday and then the other half on the Saturday. Um yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um but I, yeah, it's super fun. I would say, even if you don't know what drivers are going to be there, um, I I just think it's a really fun experience. And honestly, like if you're able to go, it's like the closest interaction that most of us will ever get with drivers. So I think it's a really fun thing to do. Um, but yeah, where the amphitheater is, um, the sun usually like directly hit, like starts hitting the chairs, like the seating really early. But there's a big pit in the front. Um, so, and you can see super well, I mean, we've always been like 20 rows or like humans back probably from the stage. We've never been up super close. Um, but we kind of were for Jack doing, yeah, we were my boyfriend. <laughs> Who um, else was, was, was Christian Lungard there with him? I think he was. Oh yeah, he was. And Marcus Armstrong. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, do it. It's fun. Like, it's just a, and honestly, like if you get there and you're like, I hate this and everything about it, walk away. Yeah. They will throw out, usually throw out hats and stuff Mm -hmm. after each team. Um, oh yeah. The drivers will throw out like merch and yeah. And this was a funny experience. Can I just make a quick PSA? Like I've seen in the past, some people like will throw friendship bracelets at them and that's all really nice, but let's not poke an eye out before they're supposed to race. Okay. Yeah. Just be careful. Yeah. Be careful. Um, okay. Which three GPs are generally the cheapest and how early should you buy tickets? Um, okay. Well, speaking of the Google thing, I actually have seen a number of people like, um, websites and stuff. They will, they've created articles that have said like the most expensive GPs to the least expensive GPs. So I think if you honestly, if you just Google, what are the cheapest, formula one races to attend you can find articles that actually break down which of the races are cheap and which races maybe are not like a monaco or a vegas or something um i've heard that imola is fairly inexpensive um i think uh i don't want to i don't, I don't want to say s- something is inexpensive and it's not mm-hmm. um but zanvort might be slightly inexpensive um anyway and i, I do want to say with the inexpensive piece like I also know that some of these tracks are like really difficult to get to and not convenient. So when you're looking like I would just make sure you're going in with like a holistic approach to the thing, because like Coda, yes, is a little bit more expensive. I think than some other races, but a lot of the times like a shuttle pass is included with your ticket. So you don't have to pay extra for that. You can bring in, I think, food and snacks. So like there's ways to save money and like other places maybe wouldn't let you do that. So just go in with like think understanding of it comprehensively. what's included in your tickets and then like how easy is it to get there because i think you know like silverstone is kind of expensive but also it's like miles and miles and miles away it's a it's to get on a train from one. london like yeah. it's yeah or book your hotel like six years in advance <laughs> right right um uh i was also going to say too you know in terms of cheapest it really de- also depends on what you're looking yeah, for do you want a grandstand ticket mm-hmm. are you looking for just a ga ticket um so I think if you're comfortable going just one day, you know, that may change your, yeah, your cause prices or that's why, and this is why I love the sprint weekends because if you go like in Austin Friday and, um, Friday is going to be the cheapest and usually, or, 
Thursday's the cheap. What? Friday. Friday. Um, because it's just practice. That's usually always the case. And then, but Saturday's nice. Like, even though it's a little bit more, it might be more expensive. You're also getting quality and the sprint. And then if like the race day is too expensive for you, like you've well, seen a lot of action. And on it. Friday, you're also getting the sprint quality. Well, sprint quality. Yes. Yeah. So you are getting something competitive. Um, so yeah, I know that's kind of a vague answer, but I do know that there are, have been articles made that will, that have br- like broken down, um, what are the cheapest F1 races to attend? What are the least expensive? And it also depends too on where you live. What's yeah, cheapest totally. for you to travel to? Like yeah. these are all things to consider. Um, so are you going to be getting ready for the wedding when sprints happening? Mm-hmm. Godspeed. Thanks. It's going to be noisy. I know. I, I'm going to have to rely pretty heavily on you. Like, I don't think I'm going to be able to watch qualifying That's okay. until later. So you're going to have to That's lead okay. the charge. Um, okay. Austin, what to wear. Um, I know sunscreen is huge. Wear fan events usually are. Wear something comfortable. Yeah, definitely. Unless, again, this is also, if you're going to be in hospitality or a paddock yeah, access. Yeah, wear what you want. Uh, yeah, go freaking crazy. But if you're with the masses, mm-hmm. sneakers, it's going to be hot. Yeah. Um, a hat. Yeah, definitely. And I think, too, like, one thing that I always have to do, too, is, like, if you like I have to have a layer of some kind just for like sun protection, mm-hmm. not necessarily cause it's going to be chilly, but, um, I mean really anything like I know a few f- times we've worn our like fur- furious motorsport jerseys, which is always like a nice layer, or even just like a light, I don't know, button up of some kind just to have some extra protection. Um, what was the full question? Just what to wear, what to wear, where fan events usually are. Okay. So, also, like, the fans, I don't know, I've been seeing the, like, Remy Bader, like, fan light a lot. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. She basically made a selfie light, like, ring light on oh, a fan. Oh, nice. Which is cute. Um, but, yeah, I think those are a huge game changer. Um, make sure to maybe bring, like, extra batteries if it's, or, like, if you, again, power bank. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I think just be comfortable. Like, there's a lot of ways to be, like, cute and comfortable because I know, like, it, a lot of us like to be i mean like the old navy skirts that we both have those Mm -hmm. are great i love the athletic dresses i have a few of those because they have sometimes i will say if i know halara has some that have like a slit in the back so you can actually like take the shorts down but um pulling those dresses back up when you're going to the bathroom can be quite a pain because there are so at coda there are permanent bathrooms all over and then also porta potties but i believe that the bathrooms i could be wrong are the bathrooms in main grandstand air conditioned i think so i don't think the other ones are oh though I, maybe they are i, I don't, don't know think so. anyway it gets sticky in there um yeah but yeah just comfortable yeah bring band-aids too like I've, if you're and for god's sakes do not break in new shoes at no. coda because you are walking miles don't and wear, miles and miles do not wear cowboy boots i'm telling you yeah. i know that they seem cute don't do it's it it's not worth it don't I do it i promise you it's absolutely horrible i mean if you want to do there's to the fan activation piece there's stuff all over the campus i mean we we probably walked 20,000 steps each day that we easy. were at Coda. It's so easy to just walk so much. And so please, 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 please be comfortable. You'll thank us later. Sabrina Carpenter, please, please, please. Exactly. Um, it sounded familiar. The fan events are, yeah, as we said, they're in the, typically with the, with, there's obviously the ones with the Formula One drivers, but then like we mentioned last year, there was the fan event. There was the, thing with Jack Dewin and oh, yeah. Marcus and Christian. So they have other little people that will come up on stage at the amphitheater. The, the amphitheater is kind of the, where stuff goes down. Mm-hmm. Um, the rides that you can do yeah. at Coda. There's like food all across the grounds. Sorry. I also yeah. don't know. Do they keep the TV on during the race in the amphitheater? It's a good question. Probably. I can't remember. Probably. Um, so that's the main kind of zone for all the stuff. Okay. So I'm going to kind of combine some questions into one, but um, somebody asked how to navigate a three day grounds pass, best things to experience. And then someone else asked best place, um, best GA spot. So if you have a three day grounds pass, what I would say is on Friday when you get there, just walk around, Yeah, walk around Find some time before if you don't want to watch practice or if you do want to watch, watch practice, but just walk around and just get kind of the lay of the land, mm-hmm. figure out where things are. 
And if you have a GA pass, you can use that to evaluate and look at the different GA locations. Now, Hannah and I were GA our first year in Austin for the race, and we were at turn 19, uh, which is right before it's the final turn right before the main straight and um it's like a I don't know I mean it's it's not high uphill but it it is a bit of a hill and you have a nice uh, decently long I say in quotes straight into like a hairpin turn Mm -hmm. and um uh and I thought it was a really good place for us because it wasn't too crowded Mm -hmm. it wasn't like by the time I would say it didn't even really get super full until right before the race started. There are some s- parts like turn one yeah. that people will show up at 6 a.m., get there, and it is packed to the brim like hours before the race starts. Yeah. And it's it's a, it's obviously a very cool view. It's right. You can see the drivers as they're starting. You see that first turn. It's probably the – like I would imagine that's where the drivers are. The y- Or you can see them the best because they're – slow down the most yeah but it's also the most chaotic yes it's you're directly in sunlight and it's chaotic as hell so unless you are like i got to be in turn one i this is like bucket list i want Mm -hmm. to do this i would avoid turn one and maybe like if you have it as a bucket list like do that on the friday or you know like a earlier day on the weekend if you're doing a three day because I do agree like it's a cool experience and you can go kind of see it from there, but then don't feel like you need to stay there the whole time. Yes. Yes. Um, But I would say we usually stay. So if you're looking at the track or like and entering mm -hmm. turn one through, if you go like around Coda to like turn 19 where we sat, like that's really the zone that we've always kind of stayed in. So Mm -hmm. like, the main grandstand area. So I, we can't really speak to what's further away. I don't really know a lot about the track that far away, like any of the activations or food and beverage and stuff. I feel like, again, it's so much like even going from like main grandstand to turn 19 zone or like the amphitheater, which is really close to turn 19 is probably like half a mile. Yeah. It's just a lot of walking. It's a lot of walking. So we never really go <laughs> much yeah. further. Yeah. So turn 19 is good. And I will, and you can also, you do have a view of turn one from turn 19. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's far away, but you can see. I mean, see we it. saw. And there's we, a screen. We were there the first year we did see George run into mm-hmm. Carlos. Um, there's also a set of, because you're like basically right across from like, turn 17 I think it is so like there's bathrooms over there there's bathrooms at the amphitheater there's a ton of food and stuff around that yeah, area it's a good place so but but I would say use that first day to walk around to figure it out to kind of evaluate spots places you like look at the track if there's a specific area I I know there's a lot of people there's like a there's like an S's section of the track which I think might be like turn four turn five I don't know exactly where that S's section we actually literally did never that seen track it. um oh, that's true but, but I, I was blacked out but some people really like that that part of the track so if there's a particular section that you enjoy um you know use that time to walk around um and yeah like make time for the fan activations the the fan zone stuff with the drivers um try to get shade if you can I don't know just it it's all so personal yeah. what you want out of the race. Like some people want to get there super, super early. Other people want to get there right before the thing starts. Mm-hmm. Like it's, um, yeah. You I will also of- say as a, if you decide to take the shuttle, which I really can't recommend enough, like, because I am also someone who's like, wants to be in control and likes to drive prefers to drive. The thing about the bus is by the end of the day, you're so exhausted and the traffic is going to be miserable regardless. So being in the bus, A, actually, you can sometimes get ahead of it because you get to be in the bus lane. But also, you don't have to do anything. You just sit and chill and it's great. Um, There was something else I was going to say about. Yeah, highly. Oh, but the earlier you get there, like if you Mm -hmm. because the. The bus is much quicker in the like earlier in the morning. Like I think nine is usually when we like tried to get to the shuttle, mm-hmm. um, and it's always super like quick and easy to get. Yeah, on the I bus think I said this time. in a different podcast episode, but with the shuttle, there's like three different locations where they pick up and drop off, and you have to buy specifically for. I don't actually know if they check. I don't know that we don't ever check, though. but I wouldn't risk it personally. But there are three different locations. I think one's like the m- 
Barton Creek Mall. Yeah, they actually do. Remember, we show our thing and then we get a wristband for the rest oh, of the weekend. Yeah, that's true. Um, and yeah, I mean, every time we've done it, like early in the morning, I mean, we get there. I mean, it's not super early, but yeah, 830 ish. And we just get right on. There's no waiting for the shuttle. There is a little bit of that at the end. But again, when we've taken, I guess we did take the shuttle all three days last mm-hmm. year. Um, but you're going to have to wait in line for a little bit, but it is easy. You just get on the bus, you sleep. Yeah. And the lines were much better last year than they were the year before. Yes. I agree with that. So I know it's like, sounds convenient to drive to park, but it's horrible. I would, I would advise against it. Um, personally, I just think the I mean, shuttle we were the stuck way to go. in a really conveniently located parking lot when we drove that one, the one time and we were in the parking lot forever trying to get out for an hour and a half. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, Okay, any hot tips for getting tickets last minute or even same day? And then someone else asked, one one day ticket, best day to go. So I would say, Hannah and I have done this pretty much every time we've been to, well, I guess not so much Miami. But any race, I like being able to kind of do like an a la carte style yeah. F1 weekend where one day I'm one place, the next day I'm somewhere else. Because I feel like you get, well, one, you get to see lots of the track, mm-hmm. different parts of the track you get to save money in a lot of ways because what's difficult about f1 if you want to go all three days is when they sell these tickets oftentimes it's like three day pass main grandstand or three day pass you know turn 19 grandstand Mm -hmm. and you're you're buying three days in all in the same location but it's fun to one day be in the main grandstand one day be at some other random grandstand and then maybe do ga on one day so i know this is i know people have had some people have had some issues with it but i would suggest downloading SeatGeek, StubHub, even Ticketmaster on your phone, have those apps and just keep looking for, if you have a particular location you want to be in, if you want to be in the main grandstand, for example, just keep checking on your phone Mm -hmm. and see if anything pops up. We've gotten last minute tickets for main grandstand every every time we, yeah, relatively inexpensive. Again, Friday is going to be your cheapest day. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you really want to be in main grandstand for one of the days, do it on the Friday yeah. or maybe do it on the sprint day. Cause yeah. then you'll get to see them start from that position. Um, uh, and then you could save money and get a GA pass for Sunday mm-hmm. or whatever, but you can, you don't have to worry about like tickets selling out or not being able to get tickets. There are always last minute tickets, tickets always available. Um, so keep, keep tabs on that on your phone. Um, please, okay. Hear me out. Do not buy tickets from anyone on Twitter that you don't know. Yeah. Nope. Like, I know that sounds so obvious, but I got desperate for Harry Styles once and I did something dumb. Now Venmo gave me my money back, which is very kind of them. But we we're all a little naive sometimes, you know? Yeah. We just really get excited. And also even even certain websites, like the only resale sites I really trust are StubHub and SeatGeek. Yeah. And honestly, Ticketmaster usually at least from my experience in Austin almost always has resale tickets yes, they, the whole weekend. They do. Um, so just keep, keep that in mind. But yeah, you should have like, if, if, if you only have a ticket for let's say Saturday, the sprint, mm-hmm. and that's the only day you've purchased tickets for, but you, you get there on Saturday and you're like, you know what? This is really fun. I actually want to go back on Sunday. Yeah. You'll be able to find tickets on that. Sunday. Wasn't there a race we weren't going to go to? Was it the first time? It was we first there? Austin. Yeah. yeah. And then, well, we, we thought Daniel might not race anymore, and so we won. Mm-hmm. Mm. Good times. <laughs> I'm glad we saw him. My, <laughs> how the tables <laughs> turn, huh? We did get to see him. I the the yeah. one thing I have is the sprint sprint race in in Miami. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so the best day to go, I would say, if you're looking cost wise and also what you get, go on Saturday. Yeah, the best That's value, the best for thing for your buck. You're getting a year is thirty Saturday. minute race essentially, and you're going to get to see quality and it won't be as expensive as the actual race yeah that's that's the day to go yeah i would i and would say well i actually i don't know the schedule but theoretically there will also be a uh, driver pep rally that day yes too. so you'd get to just do a lot of things and i'm not sure what support series are there this year i don't uh, f1 academy is not there um i don't I know if f2 hold up, hold is there but um it's not i don't think it's f2 i just had it dang it Hannah's finding it. Please hold. Um, let's see what else. Sting and Eminem will be there. <laughs> yeah, Sting and Eminem. It's also, to be fair, Saturday is also the same day as the Georgia-Texas football game. 
And Crazy. so it might be also people might be a lot of people might be at that game. So maybe you can get a decently priced ticket on Saturday. Yeah. Oh, OK. This is a good question. Are okay. you able to find your uh, just ask the okay. question? I'll keep the question. For a first GP, Vegas, Austin or Miami? I mean, we haven't been to Vegas, so we can't say yet. We can't but speak to that. I would say. Well, I'm biased. That's important. We know we're a biased podcast, but I would say Austin, because it's a purpose built track. It's everything's just, I, although I will say Miami, like really surprised me. Miami was great. But I, I think because they have, and I guess Vegas does too, like because it's a street track that's built around a stadium, like they have the core necessities. Yep. Um, and I, I can't speak to Vegas because I don't know like how often, like are you able to enter the hotels easily and like get to the bathrooms? Like, I don't know how all that's yeah. We'll done. speak to that once we go. Yes. Um, I I agree. I think Austin is just feels a lot more authentic in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. It's sort of the OG US track. Austin's like super fun. It's just really really good vibes. Miami is great. I will say for GA experience, Austin is 10,000 times it's the Agreed. best GA ex experience you can get. You don't That's really get much with GA in terms of like viewing locations yeah. at Miami. Um so if you're a GA person, that's kind of the price range you're at. Miami's a toughie. Austin's the best one to do in in that regard, but Miami, yeah, having the stadium is nice to sit if you're wanting to, and you can like look in the paddock. That's kind of fun. You yeah. can just like see what people are up to. Mm -hmm. um, you can. We need to bring next year if we go binoculars. That's so we can start to so true. Look at what's going on. Um, it's Porsche Carrera Cup. That's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And. God, those Porsches are loud. Yeah, loud. Bring the, your plugs. The Porsches yeah, are loud. Yeah, if that's, if that's something you're into, yeah. I don't really care. Um, My hearing's going anyway. Uh, okay. I'm also just trying to see if they have... Um, oh, and like in terms of what you can bring to, we've always brought water bottles, uh, empty water, you know, like a, a reusable bottle that you can fill up. We've brought food before. They haven't stopped us. They did stop us with like sunscreen, like aerosol sunscreen. Oh yeah, aerosol's a toughie. Yeah, don't have any aerosol anything. Deodorant, yeah. sunscreen, bring like liquid sunscreen. Um, yeah, that's or hide it better than only I thing. Oh, and someone else asked about um, uh, can you bring um, what was it, like um cameras that you can change oh yeah can you bring can you take cameras with detachable lenses i actually looked up on the um, on the coda website there's an faq section and they do mention that you can bring mm -hmm. cameras with detachable lenses um are there screens i would say yes there are screens i could confirm at turn 19 they have it yeah but it's again even at really any race i would say the only one that i've experienced that i've been to where the screen was actually good was monaco um uh, because it was very very close otherwise it's pretty it's pretty hard to see the well I, I, you were pretty straight on to i the was straight too. on but it was that's, big too yeah, yeah yeah but that's uh, that's been one of my main um critiques of all the i mean all the races to at both coda and miami is that all the money that they're spending, like I know that the goal is obviously to see the cars on the track, but again, you only see them for such a limited amount of time. It shocks me that there isn't more screens. I mean, you go to an NBA game, you can quite literally see everything that's going on at one time, and there are screens everywhere. Oh, yeah. So help me out here, guys. Um, so yeah, if you do go to, if you are in GA, maybe that's something that you want to look out for as like a good spot that is like straight on to the screens. Mm -hmm. um, I do know too, last year, or no, two years no i think it was coda last year a amex had something where i think they had um like they had a device where basically you could hear the commentating i mean basically when the race is going on one of us has our phones pulled up and yeah, we're sharing airpods last year we were like in, we were actually in a like hospitality section where we could have watched it on tv but we were sitting there um like in the front row like in the direct sunlight no one else cared seemed to care um about the race and we were right and yeah hannah had her airpod but it was funny because um she was playing like espn but it was delayed so like we would see i think i think it was like oscar he like we were right into the like we were looking at the section where we could see drivers pulling into the pit lane mm -hmm. and we see oscar go in and we're like hmm, interesting and then 10 seconds later it's like oscar piastri is whatever it was everything was just a little, little bit delayed yeah but that way you at least know what's going on uh -huh. in other parts of the of the track. Yeah. It's honestly, it's funny. It's the most, like, I enjoy watching races. Obviously, I get invested. But it's the most invested I get because you feel the energy. You hear the cars 
in real life. Yeah. And then you're also just like, what's going on? They've been gone for 30 seconds and I can't see anything. Yeah. And so much can happen in that yeah. time. Um, also, you can, if you get there, make sure to get to the race a little early so you can see the driver parade. They'll drive around in their little cars, which is always, you know, fun to just smile and wave. So true. Um, smile and wave, boys. Yeah, that's kind of it. That's all. Yeah, I'm just looking at the, I didn't know if the bag policy had changed, so I was just looking because I know a lot of places have changed into being like clear bags only. Mm -hmm. um, double check for yourself, um, but it looks like at the actual track, um, you can have, the bags can't be bigger than 12 by 12 by 20 inches, I, so I think, um, yeah, I, I don't know how that measures out, but check on Amazon. Most actually Amazon products will have the measurements. So it's easy to figure out if your bag is too big or too small, I guess, pending that you bought it from Amazon. Um, but keep in mind that if you are going, like if you're going to the concerts also make sure that I, I don't, I know that the amphitheater itself for concerts has different restrictions because of like Live Nation and all of that than they do maybe for the whole race. Is the concert though, I think the concert's not at the amphitheater. Oh, it's not. I think it's like in a field. Then forget everything I've said. Somewhere else. We've actually never been to the concerts no. ever. So we can't speak to the concert experience. No, because by the time we get there, it's uh, or like we are th it's that done. time. Yeah, I'm over it. We are I'm done. so tired. Um, and wait, I need to sit in bed and scroll. Yeah. Um, I will say, yeah, so just utilize the CODA website. Use the FAQs if you have a question. If you guys have a specific question that you can't find on the internet, feel free to DM us over like in the next week, and I'll do my best to help you out if I can. Um, if you have anything specific you're wondering about. Um, we said this a thousand times, but, you know, have patience. Know it's going to be chaotic. Mm -hmm. It just is chaotic. This is Actually, I have one more hot mm -hmm. tip. Mm -hmm. And it's we've said this before, but it's the best thing we've ever done. First of all, if you are uh, like, definitely we're going to go out to dinner and do all those things, I would make reservations. If you need dinner, like restaurant suggestions, let us know. I, you're say. Um, I cannot tell you how empowering it was to think about ordering DoorDash while on the bus when you're approximately 30 minutes from the hotel. I think we did it in the Uber Oh, for, uh, yes. Okay. So, yeah, you're right. The shuttle takes you back to a parking garage. We had to take an Uber to the hotel. We ordered the food when we got in the Uber. And almost every single time, as we're getting back to the hotel, our food has either is just being delivered or had, uh, had already been delivered. Yeah. Excellent. Iconic. Order the food in the car. Yeah. Here's the deal. You know, for I can go to Austin for a trip and an experience to, you know, experience the city of Austin a different time. Typically, like, the Wednesday before the race weekend we'll go out we'll have fun we'll do stuff that's where we saw james hinchcliffe last oh, year so fun you know but basically during the race weekend it is you're up super early you're at the track all day you don't get back till like 8 p.m it's game over for me i'm gonna yeah lay in bed shower mm -hmm. eat some food and then go to bed and do the same thing the next day so don't feel like oh my god i'm only i i, I mean if if you want to go out and do stuff, of yeah. course do that. But also it's okay if you're like, I need to just, cause it is a, it's tough out there guys. Well, it's a music. I mean, I've never been to a music festival, yes. but that's what it is. I mean, yes. it's all day. You're in the sun walking. You're probably not drinking enough water. You're yep. maybe not eating enough food, yep. whatever. And so by the time, like, and if uh, for us, we're out tapped out, we are out. I mean, when we were in Miami, we quite literally ate dinner at the hotel every night. Oh Yeah. We at, we at least like sat in a had like a restaurant experience, That's true, but it know? was so conveniently located it was so and nice. it was right outside. I mean, honestly, if it wasn't right on the patio, I'm no not way. sure. I don't think we would have made it. No. And so before you make it to the to door of the hotel it was the restaurant. So we just sat down. We didn't even go up to the room most of the time no. beforehand. No. So anyway, yeah, just make sure to fuel yourself. Fuel and yourself. Can't yeah. recommend enough. Don't be hungover at Coda. Unless you can handle it. No, no even but I'm then. Saying, know what you can handle. We've said this a thousand times too. It's like, I, I, I know in order for me to be my best self, I, you know, things I have to take care of. Hannah obviously knows, but, um, yeah, I mean, and I think, you know, pack electrolytes, if that's something you're fearful of, yeah. I should have, I mean, I was at the pep rally eating a slice of pizza at 10 AM <laughs> and chugging electrolytes with a little bit of a shake. <laughs> <laughs> So I just, it wasn't like that fun. <laughs> no, it's not fun. Um, okay. Again, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. I'll do our best. 
we'll do our best. I'll do our best. Yeah. I'll do my best to help She'll you. do our best. <laughs> <laughs> I'll speak on behalf of each of us. Um, okay. I know we've gone on for a little while, but I did promise we'd do some would you rathers. So let's do some would you rathers. Now I do have to say a lot of good ones, a lot of questions that you guys like. I know. So what were you going to say? <laughs> what, what they're so say? obvious. If you include Daniel in one, <laughs> you're like, come on. Now, now they are for both of us. Yeah, but they are. for her, I was yeah. actually, okay. So I'm terrible at coming up with these questions. Most of the time, I just don't like when I have to think about them, I cannot think about them. So I went to chat GPT. Oh, did and, you come up with some? Well, no, because the ones that I thought were funny, I was like, well, I came up with some, but what, what, what did you find? I was, cause at first I said, these are her favorite drivers because it was like Daniel Ricardo X, Y, Z, or some one else do this and I was like well I can't ask her that I know and, and I and you're gonna be like well I've made it so it's like Daniel Ricardo, you know gets a podium again or Lewis Hamilton gets a world championship sorry it's the yeah, Daniel Ricardo podium like I know I know that to some people that's I- idiotic craziness that's just no, how it is it's just like have you ever now, listened to this podcast maybe guys? the tough question would be like Daniel Ricardo p5 Lewis Hamilton world championship Ooh. you know I think I'd pick Lewis Hamilton world championship yeah at that because point. p5 is kind of like meh yeah and he's still at risk of going at any time <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> he got p4 once and you know look at look, <laughs> look, look right now. now so um yeah so so some of these questions I'm just like I can ask you but okay this is just you know what it means That's to hilarious to um I don't know. Also, ChatGPT needs a little bit more of a personality. <laughs> he writes a great no, actually, email, but like... No, we don't need ChatGPT to have a personality. It's you're right. It's going to become too... Because, yeah, someone said, 2021 have gone to Lewis or Daniel not leave Red Bull. Now, actually, that's maybe tough. I'm sorry. What did you just say? 2021. Like, so... The Lewis year is 2021. Lewis would have won the championship in, in 2021. Yeah. Or, or Daniel didn't leave Red Bull. Now, I actually, you know, there's a lot of people that are like... What if Daniel didn't leave Red Bull or what would have happened? And I, I the feel same like, thing. I feel like it wasn't going down a good path for him at that point anyway. Like we don't know what would have happened to him if he had stayed at Red Bull for a couple more years Chinese and was getting farmer. beaten by Max continuously or something. You know, he may, I'm not, I don't know if we, he'd be in the situation he is in now, but it's, it's easy for us. Now the bigger question is the McLaren of it all. That's I think really where things went off the rails. Fine point. But I'm going to say... I don't know. That's a tough question, actually. Would he still be in Formula One if he didn't leave Red Bull? I d- no. When he did, you think he'd, you think he'd be in, still oh, in no. Formula One? No, I don't think he would still be in Formula. Oh. I think he would have been out of Formula One a lot sooner. Really? Yeah, he wasn't happy. Interesting. He wasn't going to get better. I mean, I guess things. Could, but well, he could have left well, for a different team. You know what I mean? He could have. He could have. It could have then let him in whatever 2020 to yeah, go I mean, to we'll Aston quite, Martin or something. You yeah, know, we don't know. We'll quite literally never know. And I just. I don't like real I don't, scenario would you rather because, because it's, it's just too much. And it's and it and it's not what happened. It's not what happened and we can't be we can't be doing the, Not that it's a bad question. No. It's just I feel stressed it's, answering that. It's a hard one. Um okay, this person's we I'm gonna change the F, FMK to Kiss Mary Pie. Ugh, maybe it's not even too much, but it's Helmet, Christian, and Lauren Stroll. No, I won't be picking anything from that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Um, okay. <laughs> that was good. But Charles, no. yeah, that was a good one. Charles' first World Drivers Championship or Lewis's eighth? ChatGPT gave me that really? one. Yeah. Charles' first. Yeah. For me. Um, oh, that's a mean one. I'll ask you that off, offline. Guys, be nice. Um, I mean, it's, it's funny, but I'm not going to bring it up here. Um, okay, this is for you. Go to Monaco or Silverstone? Silverstone. Be trapped in an elevator with Christian or Helmet? Helmet. I would just I, Helmet, him. actually, I, I'm asking him all the questions. Sure. I am being investigative journalist. Yeah. I am, because he's going to tell me. Yeah, it's so true. He's going to tell me. Yeah. So. And I think for me, my concern with Christian is that I'm either going to like be so confused and like fangirl out of, ju- right? Because it's like disorienting. I know. Or I'm going to say some shit I should not say. Yeah. Both are bad. Yeah. And so I'd pick helmet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And elevator this is a rides tough question. Quick. This is a good one too. Would you rather meet Daniel or see him in the other Red Bull effective immediately? That's a good one. I'd rather meet Daniel. Oh man. 
It's so, I mean, what is meat? You know, is it just like yeah, a. Yeah, yeah. See, and you get too fucking carried away with all this stuff. Like, <laughs> like you don't get mean? fucking no, carried no, away. No, no, I know. But, <laughs> but so here's the thing. Here's where I'm at with Daniel being a Formula One driver. Yeah, tell me. He, it's been so tumultuous. Yeah. So my fear is that anytime we think about him getting back in the sport. You're like, it's like, what's the ticking time bomb now? Yeah. And is it going to be more pain and yeah. misery? Yeah. I know what you mean. I still think instinctively it's I'm like picking him, getting him back in Formula One. That's just like what my gut tells me. That's but again, fine. if it's like Daniel comes on the podcast and we have a lot, if it's not just like a, hey, hey, and then move on, like two, sh- like a so 30 I, second I, interaction. I'm going meet as like, it's, it's not like a, you see them, him on the street or something. Like you are going to have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be fine. Obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> How do you think you'd actually manage um, I think I'd I be think okay. if you knew it was happening, you'd ca- like you would yes. get in the right headspace. Yes, yes. If you just yes. like randomly yes. walked into a hospitality suite yes. and he's there, I think you'd fall apart. Yes, yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. If it was like or on the street or something, yeah, and I'd yeah. See him, I would freeze. Yeah, but yes, if if we knew it was happening, but you have to say something if that ever happens. Okay, you need you will regret it forever. I know I will. And he's so kind. I know he's gonna be so nice. Yes. Oh, I, I have no, I have no fear about. Him I being know, nice. but I'm just telling your okay. future self to just Get suck it, it up and go say hi. Yeah. Um. Yeah. If we were, if if someone was like, your guys are gonna interview Daniel in in a week. When the day time comes to actually put out my hand and say hi, I'm Zoe. It's nice to meet you. I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Um. But it's the being caught off guard that would you Abs- know, absolutely. Take me I mean, it catches anyone off guard. You know? <laughs> exactly. It's horrible. Okay, this is an easy one, I think. This is easy. Taylor Swift concert with uh, Pierre and Charles or Harry Styles concert with Danny Rick. <laughs> Harry Styles concert with Danny Rick. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, would obviously totally go to a Taylor Swift concert with Charles yeah. and Pierre. That would be so fun. Yeah. But, yeah. This is random. I just remember um, my coworker has this theory that Coldplay is going to have a um, residency at the Sphere. Oh, they just, uh, they just announced a tour. Oh, so they're not going to have a residency at the Sphere? <laughs> not, not according to the re- to the tour. Okay. <laughs> but that's a good idea. Maybe after this tour is over, maybe they'll do just like... Because isn't their new album called something Sphere or an old album called something of the Sphere? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Plus, they're made for the Sphere. Anyway, continue. Um, <laughs> this one's so funny. <laughs> Would you rather be hit on by Pierre or be mean to Charles and make him cry? <laughs> Be mean to Charles and make him cry. Really? No. I'd have to be hit on by but Pierre. I don't know what to do if I got hit on by Pierre. <laughs> That's funny. That's just like those are the two options. Mm-hmm. Would you rather Yuki grew one foot in height overnight or Toto shrank one foot? <laughs> Toto would still be taller than me if he shrank one foot. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. He'd be five five. Oh. That's hard. <laughs> I mean, a six two Yuki honestly too powerful. <laughs> yeah, then I can't have any of that. <laughs> Yuki would be too powerful. That's a really stressful question. I'd 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 rather well, if Yuki was six three, he couldn't be a Formula One driver. Well, he certainly couldn't eat the way he's been eating. He'd have to <laughs> really slim it down. Yeah, well, <laughs> really he, slim it down. He'd be so stressed. I out. don't know. That's a tough one, guys. That is a tough one. Um. Um. Okay. Da, da, da. Would you rather be the sibling of Lando, Max, or Daniel? Oh. I don't like that. I'll be Max's sister. Yeah, I was going to say, Matt, I feel like I have the less, rom- like, the least amount of potential romantic feelings for Max. Really? Yeah. What? I don't know. It's just today's answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm also having, hard- someone told me that. You look like Max. Well, yeah. Oh, that's not what you were going to say. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but. He does kind of look like my cousin, and that kind oh, of freaks that kind me of ruins out. it. Um, which I guess makes sense why, s- why someone said that we look alike. Would you rather party with Max, Lando, Daniel, Lewis? You guys know us very well. These questions are very specific. I have to pick one of them? Yeah. Why can't we hang out with all of them together? You gotta pick one. Okay, say it all again. Would you rather party with Max, Daniel, Max, Lando, Daniel, Lewis? So I think you should party with Daniel, I'll party with Max, and then we'll meet up. <laughs> okay. Because they're. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um <laughs> would you rather have to have to shave carlos's hair or jack's hair jack carlos 
I I am not as attached to Jack's hair as I am to Carlos's hair. I'm not as attached to Carlos, so. Yeah, we know. Um, Would you rather take uh, cooking classes with Yuki or a round of golf with Alex? Round of golf. Cooking class with Yuki. Love a driving driving a golf cart. I won't be golfing because I can't. um, I don't know how. Okay, I have one. Okay, sure. sure. Would you rather do a hot lap with Lewis Mm -hmm. or spend half a day on a yacht with Charles? Ooh, that's a tough one. I know. Because the hot really, lap is short. I, I know. I was really proud of that one, actually. I mean, the yacht. I, I figured that's where you Yeah, but that's a tough one because it's, like, iconic to be, to have been driven by Lewis Hamilton is something that so few can say. Agreed. And, I mean, we'll be one of the greats. Mm-hmm. So, that's tough. That's I a know. tough one. Thank you. We'll take both, obviously. Um, never go to a GP in person again or your favorite driver never wins a GP. Well, my favorite driver is out of Formula One. <laughs> so... That's question answered. <laughs> that's already, you know, I, I will I will never get to see him win a race. So that's fun for me. Um, so I can handle that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Look at you. Look You're at a survivor. <laughs> okay, I have another one. Okay. Would you you're having a birthday party. Okay. And you don't get a lot of time with them. Okay, so you can have Lando DJ or Yuki Cater. Oh, L- Lando DJ. Yeah, okay. For sure. Just for that one song episode totally, totally. Uh, i yeah too bad he's not a dj anymore i know like uh, this is for do you think maybe this martin told him that he's like really bad and then he got embarrassed no and no 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 i oh. think he just is like busy he just has one he's a one trick pony on the on the deck and he he, <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of range yeah he realizes he needs to call it quits before people start calling him a fraud <laughs> It's um, just a hobby. Sometimes, it, or if if we ever decide to do a Patreon, I have um, I have like a to- a talking point that I want to talk about on the Patreon. Do you have it written just, down somewhere so you don't forget? I'll remember. Okay. Um, <sighs> relive Daniel's exit from McLaren or exit from Red Bull. I mean, I guess his exit from Red Bull it was his choice. Yeah. Um, eat. Look. Leck with Charles Leclerc or collab with Daniel and Enchante? Collab with Daniel. Yeah, let's do fan behavior capsule collection with Enchante. I honestly would, <laughs> that would be lose the dream my mind. of our life. Yeah. Yeah. I, actually, also, I think. Isn't it called Lick? Yeah, Lick, Leck, but it's just when it's when it's spelled out L E C. But it's Leclerc. Leclerc. Yeah. Um, I think our dream is to be to. Um, to like model his like new upcoming Ashante drop. Okay, we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> I know. Uh, Maybe we should like make our own, you know, kind of do our own shoot for him, and then. What if we like did a, like we order the whole collection uh-huh. from the Ashante garage, yeah, and then just like pretend it's a paid partnership <laughs> and just to get his attention, <laughs> we get an email or like a cease and desist. Well, we're giving him free advertising. We are. Not that he needs it, but. Would you rather have an outfit picked out by Joe or Lewis? Lewis, I think it's more. Well, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I actually don't know. They have a very similar. They do have vibe. a similar vibe. So, I but I would know. just want to. I, I would. I would rather say that my outfit's been picked out by Lewis Hamilton. Same. Would you rather go to the Oscars with Daniel? I'm, these are so cater tests. Like these. These are the same people over and over again. Go to the Oscars with Daniel or the Met Gala with Lewis. <laughs> I mean, I'm picking the Oscars, obviously. Yeah, same. You but, are? Oh. Well, yeah, because I don't I don't really care about the Met that much. Oh. In the way, like, I like it. I think it's iconic. The fashion piece, I don't, like, I'm not a huge Fashion fashionista. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I love the Oscar. Like, yeah, put me, me too. in a room with a bunch of famous people. Yeah. Which I, I know that Met is, too, but the Met feels too sophisticated yeah, for me. Yeah, I actually would rather, not that it, I can't pick and choose, but I would rather go to the Golden Globes. globes because i feel like that's much more of like a social yeah. all the tables are so close together and you can kind of and there are tables aren't there not tables at yeah, the oscars, they're not tables at the oscars. Tricky. so anyway thank you guys for the great would you rathers that was fun that was fun do you have any others that you would like well, to i share? thought of one um i don't know if it's very good but i'm just gonna go with it tell me you can pick pierre or lando to take over your instagram for a whole month or oh. your social media who's who's running your social pierre media? yeah yeah Lando might be a little unhinged and Pierre's going to, he's going to curate it. It's going to mm-hmm. be, he's a man with an Instagram plan. Yeah. 
the Toomey ad really like sent me into a little bit of a, t- a tailspin. The Tell Lando. me why. I don't know. I think what I have a hard time with is when I think he's hot, I get really nervous because he's my brother's best friend. Like that's the vibe. It like really throws me for a loop when he's. I thought like, we've got. I thought. Hot. I thought we worked through this like a couple years ago. Well, it, it's, it's still working. Because problems. I think what's hard is like he's has so much little brother best friend energy Mm -hmm. and then he's just hot yeah and it really goes back and forth so frequently it's like whiplash (laughs) (laughs) i think i've just like accepted the reality of the situation yeah i think i what i need to just like reframe in my mind is that i think he's hot and sometimes he gives me the ick and like Mm -hmm. that is really this dynamic Mm -hmm. we're talking about but yeah i thought of one would you rather have lando or oscar be world driver champion next You don't have to whisper it. You can say it loud and proud. I'm really scared about what it's going to do to Lando's ego if he becomes champion within the next two years. If, if Lando becomes champion. Yeah, I'm really afraid of that it's, his head's going to like explode. Oh, I don't feel that, really. I, I've said this before. I, will, I want Lando to be like the the next crossover between F1 and pop culture in terms of sure. I want him to date a famous person. Yeah. I've said this before. I ship him and Sabrina Carpenter. Um, yeah. I know that she's with... Barry and again I thought they broke up they're on and off oh, and okay. I think he might be dating somebody it's TBD I, I have no idea his current relationship status but I feel like it's perfect to match match made in heaven match made in my heaven and um there's the Taylor I Swift. don't see it there's a Taylor Swift Travis Kelsey connection sure virgins plus Lando and Travis have met so they'll yeah. all hang I just I feel like he's the one of all the F1 drivers who can transition into that like real sort of pop culture yeah, moment for sure and if you guys have any other suggestions of young celebrities that he could i think part of my be. um the block for me is like yeah. i don't see him with a blonde he's currently dating a blonde okay well i haven't seen her so yeah. i didn't know um who's he dating she's a model classic uh who used to be friends with i think he's dating her i i actually don't know I, it's very vague i'm 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 very much on the periphery i don't really get you know too too deep in the weeds but there are a lot of lando girlies who who do and that's totally great um i, I mean I, I used to do i that stay too. on the periph but yeah. um <laughs> and just kind of observe i mean sh- i always knew who one direction was maybe kind of question mark dating um you yeah that's oh shocking she's like absolutely stunning mm-hmm. so anyway um but see young okay. young hollywood is you know coming up and uh we can we, we could find some i should have him. specified american blondes oh okay you know what i'm saying kind we'll of, talk about it later i guess um anyway thank you guys for sending in your questions yeah it's been a long episode i know but oh yeah shit we didn't even do the um we didn't even do the word for usgp this is the longest episode of all time it's not but um okay let me just pull this up so is it Austin? No, it's US GP. It's you. That's, those are the rules. We've created them. No, no, no. I know. I'm just trying to think of a word that starts with you. <laughs> Carlos Sainz. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of him. <laughs> you can't get um, Pierre or Joe. That's good because I got Max. Oh, nice. I, I, let me d- double check on that. <laughs> um I know you got Max once. Da, da, da. Yep, you're good. That's your second time getting Max. Goodbye, Max. Um we need to put Franco in the hat and oh, yeah. um Liam. Uh tough. But it's how it goes. Okay, your word. I'm gonna say unique. Unique USGP. What are the other, what's Vegas called? Las Vegas GP? Mm -hmm. Sorry. I know that's a dumb question, but okay. Um, Dead air, dead air. Ugly. (laughs) Ugly? Mm -hmm. What what do you mean by that? I don't know. This is the first word of the year. (laughs) It was that or Uranus. So (laughs) I literally, why can't I think of anything? But like Uno reverse. Okay. (laughs) That's kind of fun. We'll hyphenate it so it's one word. Yeah. Uno reverse USGP. It's going to be like, I like that. next last year's USGP with Lewis and Charles getting disqualified mood. Uno reverse. Okay. They win. Sick. Who did win? 
Wait, no, they didn't win. They got on the podium, but they didn't win. Right. Because Max won. No, yeah, right. Duh. Max won everything last yeah. year. Yeah. But this time it's Uno re- reverse. They win. Everyone else loses. And but they can't both win. Well, one could win the sprint, one could win the, the race. That's true. And I, I don't really care. I guess. But I'm a big fan of Uno reverse. Let's just move on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you guys for listening. We'll be back next week with our Austin recap. I'm Lots to cover, lots to um, emotionally work through next week. So I'm excited to work, work through it all with you guys. Yeah, and I'm going to have a lot of money going out the window when Enchante exactly. garage drops. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week. Enchante! Enchante.